Hello there! My name is Chuck and you're watching Seriscapedia. This is the show where I do my research so you don't have to. There are three main things affecting colors. The first one would be pigments, the second would be length of day, and the third would be weather. And let us start with pigments. As collectors, one of the things that draws us to something is color. This is buried deep within us. Colors are attracted to us. Color evokes feelings and emotions. Even nature uses colors as a survival and reproductive strategy. I'm sure we've heard this about succulents too. Some varieties are prized for their color, so you must be asking yourself, how do they get their colors? Most people will tell you, just trust them and the colors will come out. You have probably watched countless of videos about the topic of stressing your plants, but how exactly does that work? Allow me to walk you through it. Plant colors, like in painting or lights, are affected by pigments. When dealing with plant colors, we're mainly talking about three pigments here. The first would be chlorophyll, the second would be carotenoids, and the third would be anthocyanin. This is the all familiar pigment which gives leaves their basic green color. We know that this is necessary for photosynthesis, the process by which the plant converts sunlight into sugars. These are pigments produced by plants, algae, and some animals. In plants, it produces the yellows, oranges, and browns, which are the colors you'll typically associate with corn, apricot, bananas, and the like. Carotenoids are always present, but they are masked by chlorophyll. In the case of variegated plants, some areas have no chlorophyll, which reveals the carotenoids underneath. This is why you would see streaks of green and yellow on this plant. As the leaves age, the production of chlorophyll goes all the way down, which in turn reveals the carotenoids. This is why you see all of these impressive colors in autumn when the leaves are about to fall. These colors simply become predominant. This is also the same reason why you see fruits go from green to yellow or orange as they ripen. The word anthocyanin derives from the Greek anthos, which means flower, and kianos, which means dark blue. These are pigments that appear red, purple, or blue, depending on their pH. They are usually red or pink in acidic solutions, purple in neutral solutions, and diminish from greenish-yellow to colorless in alkaline solutions. According to some studies, anthocyanins may help protect against extreme temperature, particularly the cold. Unlike chlorophyll and carotenoids, Anthocyanins are not present during the growing season, but are instead actively produced towards the end of summer. They form when there's an excess of plant sugars, which break down under the presence of light. The autumn color of leaves is a result of anthocyanins and carotenoids combined. As you approach the winter equinox, which is also known as the day where you get the least amount of sunlight during the day, the sun does not go as high as it usually does due to the Earth's tilt, and this becomes more obvious in extreme latitudes. As a result, you will experience shorter days and a lower intensity of sunlight. This starts getting noticeable in autumn. The shorter days and the decreased intensity of sunlight kickstarts processes in the leaves, leading them to fall. As the veins constrict, this leads to plugging and this traps plant sugars within the leaves as they have nowhere else to go. In response to the increased amount of sugar, the, the leaf has to produce anthocyanins to break down this sugar. Eventually, the veins constrict so much that the leaf forms a separation layer and eventually detaches itself from the main plant. The third factor contributing to the amazing colors in autumn is weather. Specifically, this refers to the weather conditions around the time where the chlorophyll production is diminishing. The key elements here are temperature and moisture. To maintain the brilliant display, what you want is to keep the anthocyanin levels really high. And the best weather conditions to have that is having warm sunny days and cold but not freezing nights. 
The way this works is that the warm weather spurs the production of chlorophyll, but the cold nights would make the plant think that it is autumn and they would have to constrict the veins. By constricting the veins, they would plug the pathway, which as mentioned earlier, would prevent excess sugars from coming out. This results in lots and lots of sugar in the leaves, which have nowhere else to go, which also means that the leaf has to produce an excess amount of anthocyanin, which gives you all of these colors. So in conclusion, if you want the plants to have really dazzling colors, what you'll want to do is to spur the plant to produce as much sugar as it possibly can and make it think it is autumn. I'll leave that up to you. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you won't miss out on the next episodes of Seriscapedia. You might also be interested in my weekly vlog which I call Let's Plant. It comes out every Tuesday morning my time which is about Monday evening Eastern time. And again, this is Seriscapedia. I'm doing my research so you don't have to.